Hi, this is Chicho. What we're going to do right now is do a little bit of uh, prep work for um, for what we're going to do for the language of mathematics and math in real life. At some point in the near future, or in the future, we're going to do a series on uh, probability and statistics. And what we're going to do to learn probability and statistics is to learn how to shoot dice, how to play craps. Um, because probability is a branch of mathematics that um, basically started from us trying to understand games of chance, to, to, trying to optimize our chances of winning. Uh, I figured that was a good way of uh, introducing the topic. Okay. Now, what I've done already is gone out to um, uh, gone outside and taken my tripod, the camera, and we found a nice, beautiful little wall. And um, we did a little uh, primer for this video, uh, specifically for what the distribution is for rolling two six-sided die art, right? So we took these these two dice and we went outside and uh, we plotted off the distribution graph for. You know what the probability is for rolling these two sets of dice and we're going to specifically use that for um, to learn the game of crafts and to learn how to shoot dice now one thing i didn't mention in that video is um, basically what uh, the way i learned um, in you know how it became instinct to me what the probability of rolling dice was and it wasn't from craps it was from playing backgammon and um, one thing that we do need to do uh, to learn how to play how to, how to shoot dice how to play back how to play craps is um, we're going to need a data set right because that's one thing we do uh, with math one of the most, most powerful tools that we have uh, uh, that mathematics offers us is when we collect a large data set then we can look at the, you know see how that um, that that whatever it is how it functions right so when we go outside and collect a whole bunch of data, um, what we can do is analyze that data and that data gives us information about whatever system that we're, um, we're trying to learn, right? And we need that data set to be able to learn how to play craps and to learn how to uh, shoot dice, right? Now for me, um, the game that I learned uh, what the probability distribution, how dice behave, was not craps, it was uh, when I learned how to play backgammon and I really can't remember when it was that I learned how to play backgammon I just since I was a kid I just played backgammon I think it was probably the first game I ever learned how to play that and gin rummy and we'll talk about gin rummy and the probability of cards and poker and stuff later on uh, what we're gonna do is start off with uh, dice um, and to be able to collect that data so we need that data set to be able to um, uh, to learn how to play crafts, to learn how to shoot dice. Uh, what I ended up doing was uh, filming uh, my grandmother and me playing backgammon. And I put together uh, six videos, um, and they're basically uh, six rounds that we play. And the way uh, that me and my grandma play backgammon is uh, um, usually play whoever gets to five first, right? So it's best out of nine. And there's a few rules that we have and I've, I checked up the information online. Uh, there's some uh, some rules that some people play with that we don't play with and we have some some rules that we introduced that uh, there you know I didn't find really online uh, so we're we're pretty hardcore about our backgammon uh, for those who know how to play backgammon one of the things that we do is uh, uh, we can't hit and run inside your home base um, and uh, that's that's a huge, huge game changer. If you're if you know if you do if you do not have play backgammon and you're gonna watch these games that we're gonna play, uh, you'll notice uh, you know things happening. And if you're you know you're familiar with backgammon, I think you will pick up on those rules. Okay. So just a heads up, uh, these six videos that we've loaded up uh, is gonna be me and my grandma playing backgammon, and it's basically for us to appreciate what the game game of backgammon is uh, for me to preserve a little history I guess I haven't done this and this was a great opportunity um, to video um, my grandma and me uh, playing backgammon and I can't tell you um, how many games we've played I've been playing backgammon since 
uh, I don't know, I don't have recorded memory of learning it. I just knew how to play it because we, you know, since we were kids, we used to watch the elders play, right? Um, and it's a brilliant game. And if you ever, you know, if you want to learn, um, you know, simple uh, multiplication, addition, uh, basic probability, uh, learn how to play backgammon or teach your kids how to play backgammon. Uh, it's an amazing learning tool. Okay. So um, what we've ended up doing is shooting um, six games of backgammon and what we're going to do later on is i'm going to collect that data later on and throw in the table and you know take take a look at that data plot that data and see what we can do with that data and see if it fits the probability distribution that we you know did the introduction the primer for this for for the series on probability uh, if see if it fits that distribution that we talked about that we drew right what i'd like to do right now is is show you my grandmother's backgammon board because uh, if you're um, if you play backgammon, I think you'll appreciate this board. And I'm going to tell you its history a little bit and uh, give you a close-up view of what the backgammon board looks like. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's a beautiful board, uh, and it's my favorite board to play on. Okay. Now, this is a case sort of a red velvet case that my grandmother sewed to hold hold a backgammon board, right? Um, and it's a beautiful little case. She did this a few years ago. Um, and, and as you can tell, it's, it's soft. It's, it's nice to play with. Right, it's nice to just to grab it. It just feels good when you pick it up and bring it over, and the game's about to begin, right? And this backgammon board is a backgammon board that my great grandmother bought uh, in the nineteen in the mid in the mid nineteen fifties, for what I've been told, in a bazaar in Tehran, Iran, and she gave it as a gift to my grandfather and my grandmother, and they've had it since now. Right now, we're in. 2014 so they've had it for a good uh, well we can do the mathematics right good uh, 60 years right uh, so this backgammon board uh, that's inside here um, is much older than I am or older than I am anyway uh, and it's a beautiful board and uh, it's uh, it's a treasure uh, so the way we I usually or we usually take the board out we just you know put the thing on the table and you just slide off right slide off the the container for it right let me show it to you it's handmade wood i'm not sure what type of wood it is right beautiful beautiful right. i'm gonna do it this way And all these square pieces here, uh, these are individual pieces put together, right? And when you move the thing, right? Beautiful board. I'm not sure what type of wood this is. Now on this side, this thing, you know, it's got some wear and tear, obviously. I don't know how many games we've played on this. It's, it would have been in thousands, tens of thousands. I have no idea, 60 years of playing backgammon uh, within the family, right? Now on this side, it's, uh, it's got some wear and tear, but it's intact. On the other side, unfortunately, we have one, two, three squares missing and a little bit of chipped on this one. Okay. And from what I've been told, um, and some of these things are, they're tight on there, but they're not, you know, flush to the board. And uh, what I've been told is um, when my great grandmother bought this, 
um, they were at the time they were living uh, at a place where it was a little bit of humid so uh, the wood got a little bit of humidity damage I guess but this is what the board is and the pieces in there uh, they're all the original pieces right and they're loose right uh, let me open it up you can open it up and here it is and this paper here is uh, uh, us keeping track uh, me and my grandma keeping track and my cousins uh, have some notes in here as well uh, the whole family plays backgammon basically or a large part of the family plays backgammon and that's us um, keeping you know keeping tabs on what's going on right one side is uh, uh, this one is uh, me and my grandma one side is my score the other side is my grandma's score and what uh, how many games we play like there right and we've got a set for a few years unfortunately we threw away a lot of this right and this is what the board looks like right, beautiful board This piece is loose. It's one of the end pieces, right? That goes here, right? And we place our uh, pieces on the board. And you'll see uh, uh, through the six games, uh, you know, the angle of the camera is shooting from the top so you can see what we're doing. Um, the pieces are, uh, because we haven't varnished this at all, this hasn't been uh, touched, this <laughs> it's the original board. Um, you know, we haven't pampered to it. Uh, but the pieces are uh, fairly similar in color. One is uh, white, uh, I wonder if you can see this. One is, this one is white, we call it the white piece, and this is the black piece, right? So on camera, it, you know, it might not appear, um, the colors might be, you know, not that distinguishable but when we're playing them they're not bad uh, and you'll see hopefully the laying is good enough that you'll um, you know you can distinguish the pieces and on the back of these they used to have velvet uh, so they wouldn't go bang on the table right um, but uh, the well <laughs> velvet's worn off and we tore off some of it because uh, you know there's something about the sound of playing backgammon it's brilliant uh, very hypnotic uh, very meditative uh, and some of these pieces you know they got little nicks out of out of them not too many of them though most of them are really uh, beautifully intact you know there's maybe three or four pieces uh, that are not intact um, and there's 15 uh, you know this is five so there's 15 of the white pieces and 15 of the black pieces and you know we set up the game and you'll see how it's set up and how we do play it okay it's a beautiful board all right those are all the pieces everything just sits there loose and, um, and there's a little history I'd like to tell you about the dice as well uh, from what I understand and these are much smaller than what we did uh, uh, distribution for the when we did the mathematics uh, learn how what the uh, probability distribution was for rolling two six sided die are right so these guys are a lot smaller um, from what I know these I don't believe they were the original dice that came with the board the original dice that came with the board they were bigger than this uh, but um, we sort of appreciate uh, the little dice because they spin a lot more you can hit him against the uh, hit him hit him against the board and watch them spin and the sound they make is just fantastic and um, from what i understand these dice were bought after um after the board so they weren't the original dice that came with the board um and they used to have sharp corners i'm not sure if you can see this these things have uh filed down corners so they're not fair die and what fair die means is basically they haven't been tampered with the probability they're weighted in a way where the probability of rolling is um, is the same for each number right and it's very difficult to create 
100% um, fair die. Most die are fair. I mean, it's, uh, the the difference between the probability of rolling one or the other is is not that much. Hopefully, with the data we collect uh, uh, through these six sets of six matches that me and my grandma played, we'll find out how fair these die are. Right? Uh, who knows? Maybe the probability graph graphs is is skewed in one direction or the other, or you know, it might it might have peaks on it. We'll find that out. Right? Uh, but most die are fair and the fairest die that you'll ever come across is the red dice usually red that you see uh, on craps tables in casinos those are those are made to perfection and they rotate those die um, I'm not sure after how many after so many rolls uh, the, the lifespan of those die are gone because they don't want the dice to be skewed in any way because all you need to do is kicked your probability just tilt the probability in one direction just a little bit and that gives you a lot of advantage over the people who are on the other side of the normal on the other side of the axis of symmetry right so what you want to do is make sure your distribution for die is perfectly symmetrical and if you tamper with dice you throw off that symmetry and what we're gonna do we will find out if this these die are fair um, and these die used to have sharp edges but um, the story is that my grandfather um, was losing a lot of games to my grandma and she was getting a lot of devils so he um, he decided to file down the die to make sure that uh, my grandma wasn't cheating by setting the dice and rolling doubles. So he filed down the die and all of the die have little rounded edges and they're not perfect, but they're not bad. So as long as uh, the same two people are rolling with the same two die, right? If this, these die are not fair, if the distribution is skewed, then you both have the same probability of getting the same it having the same advantage right and when we do an analysis on uh, on data that we're going to collect and it's going to take a long time to do this right but we will do the analysis to find out uh you know if if my distribution the way i rolled die is the same as my grandmother's distribution and the way she rolls dice to see what my probability distribution is like compared to what my grandmother's probability distribution is like compared to what the actual probability distribution should be like for rolling two sets of die, right? Just to give you an idea of what we can do with a large data set once we collect it and the power of mathematics, the power of probability, oops, the power of probability and statistics, right? And um, and that's about it. This is, this is a die we play with and you're gonna, I don't know how many hours, uh, each game takes anywhere each set takes anywhere between half an hour to an hour to play and there's six sets six matches that we played actually it could be shorter i think one of them my grandma you know beat me really fast uh, so that one went really quick right and um you know we'll collect the data um at some point uh, and what we will be doing is or I, what i will be doing is editing those videos and putting those up on youtube and uh putting those up online so you can take a look at how the game of backgammon is played or how we play it and you can collect the data yourself uh, because this is creative commons if you if you want to collect the data and play around with it uh, be my guest uh, uh, tabulate the data and if you do tabulate the data send it my way because i haven't thrown in a spreadsheet yet uh, as of um, uh, end of may 2014 hopefully by you know end of 2015 to beginning of 2016 we'll get into this and uh, tabulate data and start taking a look at some probability right um, and that's about it uh, and this is the board again and this is what we're going to play on and this is what you're going to see uh, for the backgammon games okay and there is a video out there talking about um, what the probability distribution is for rolling to die and a little introduction to tell you you know some of the rules probably of uh, that me and uh, my grandmother adhere to that we play with uh, when we do play craps um, and some of the intricacies of what we do uh, because we do have money on the table on on the line as well okay 
that's it for now. I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.